With the emergence of the novel coronavirus, COVID-19, we are once again reminded of the seriousness of a pandemic. And as anxiety levels are escalating, we see more and more information being spread around about how we can protect ourselves uh, from this novel coronavirus. While most of this information stems from positive uh, intent about trying to help people protect themselves, misrepresentations of information can result in false sense of security and a whole series of other problems. So in this series of videos, we are going to discuss about some important information about virus in general. And this information can help guide us make more informed decisions about the validity of this content that we are going to come across. So let's get into it. Hi, I'm Roy from School of Success. Really happy to have you here together with us in this video. And unlike the previous video, which we all agree that is a little too detailed, we are going to discuss this set of content over a series of more bite-sized video. And let's get into it. So today we are going to discuss the first important information about viruses, which is the size of virus. Just like humans, virus come in many shapes and sizes. A typical virus will be of the range of 20 nanometers to 400 nanometers. If you're wondering how big a nanometer is, go ahead and grab the nearest ruler that you can find. Right over here, take a look at the CM marking and the smallest marking over here represents a millimeter. How big a nanometer is, imagine this small little space and divide it by a million times. Not a thousand, but a million times. That's how small a nanometer is. So what's the significance of this information, especially at this period of time? Well, other than toilet paper, <laughs> one of the biggest hype right now is face masks <gasps> or surgical masks. Knowing the size of virus will help us better understand the degree of protection that this surgical mask can provide us. Surgical masks are designed to create a physical barrier between the wearer's respiratory inlets and the surrounding. When you see a surgical mask, you will notice that there is a colored side and a plain side. The colored side usually contains some water repelling properties that will help prevent liquid projectiles from staying on this surface itself. And between these two layers, there is a middle layer which acts as a filter and the white side has some moisture absorption function which serves to improve the comfort of the wearer. Based on this sharing, you should be able to infer that the colored side should always be facing outwards. Surgical masks are usually worn, as its name suggests, during surgery, and it is pretty effective in preventing more viscous liquid like blood from penetrating through to the other side of the mask. But in the current context, we are concerned about how effective this is in preventing the spread of the virus or preventing the wearer from contracting the virus itself. So different masks have different liquid repelling properties and you can do it with a simple test by taking some form of a spray, maybe just like this bottle over here and spray across and to see how effective that is. But with our outermost layer possibly compromised, let's examine the next layer, which is the filter. Let me keep this. Most surgical masks have an average pore size of about 20 microns. And the upper bound of this pore size can actually go up to 100 microns. And that is a lot, a lot bigger than the size of a virus, which is in the nanometers or zero point something microns. Let's bring in the more serious masks, which are the N95 masks, right? So N95, what does that mean? N95 masks actually means that they have an up to a 95% effectiveness in blocking up particles of the size of 0.3 micron. And that is about 300 nanometers. Mm, that sounds much better, literally a thousand times better than our average surgical masks. But before we go and raid those N95 mask making factories, let's take a look at our current coronavirus. They have found that the average size of the current novel coronavirus or COVID-19 is 
to be of the size of about 0.1 to 0.125 microns. Hence, comparing it to 0.3 microns of the N95 mask, perhaps it may not be able to serve its function of that 95% efficiency. So now that you have all this information, feel free to make your own conclusions. My personal take of this is that surgical masks, face masks themselves will have very limited effectiveness when it comes to protecting the wearer from the virus itself. Oh. However, that does not mean that there is no purpose of face masks in this current situation. Huh? Face masks will be very effective in preventing massive contaminations from respiratory droplets, which is the main form which COVID-19 is spreading through. Our cough and our skin <laughs> can project our respiratory droplets to distance as far as 8 meters for a sneeze <laughs> and 6 meters for cough. <laughs> Even though the bigger droplets will usually land between 1 meter to 2 meter distance. So by wearing a face mask, that will help prevent these respiratory droplets from being deposited all over the place when a person coughs or sneezes. While asymptomatic spread has yet to be confirmed and more research is going on in that aspect, wearing a face mask can help prevent unknowing carriers of the virus from spreading the virus through their respiratory droplets. In all, I personally think that face masks will be most useful if it is given to those people who are sick and also those people who are at high risk of being infected hence reducing the spread of the virus in the community. With that said, I believe that there is no real need to stockpile large amount of masks for this period of time for self-protection. So on one hand, we hope that our video will provide some form of comfort for those people who think that they do not have enough face masks for this period of time. At the same time, we will want to help people appreciate those who are wearing face masks in public as that will help keep us safer as well. Oh yes, one last reminder and that is to never reuse your masks and dispose them properly. These masks are contaminated after prolonged use and should be disposed immediately and properly after use. That's it from us today. Thank you so much for going through this whole video together with us. If it's useful, please share it with your families and friends. And we also hope that you get to experience how a simple knowledge about the size of virus can actually be related to things that is happening around us. And with that said, we wish everybody a lovely and safe week to come. Cheers!